And welcome back to SLTV, guys. This is a Star Ladder Star Series Season 11, the North American matchup between the Sneaky Knicks Assassins and Wheel Wreck Wall Whistling. It's a one night, one game sort of deal. This is it. It's the best of one, and then we're done for the evening. So nice and fun, fast and fresh. I'm glad you guys could join me. My name is Toffees. You can follow me at Toffees underscore Dota 2 for updates, upcoming matches, tournaments, and all the fun stuff that you love to hear about. And I'm joined here by my co-caster, uh, the intrepid Got Cow, Gorgon the Wonder Cow. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well. You guys can find me at Got Cow Dota on Twitter. And I'm happy to be here casting the Star Letter match between Wheel Wreck while whistling and Sneaky Nick's Assassins. And it should be a pretty good time. We also have LDJ from the Standard Deviant Stat Crew joining us over on Stats, and uh, should be a lot of fun as this thing gets underway. So what we're seeing is uh, two North American teams in the Sneaky Nick's Assassins, a team that uh, I think everybody knows at this point. They came onto the scene, uh, I'd say a little, just about a year ago. Yeah, about uh, February last year is when they officially kind of sprung out and have really been growing uh, as a group their synergy is almost always very very solid a lot of roster changes in the past but have sort of settled in with what they have right now on the opposite side is will wreck while whistling a team that you have a difficult time saying five times fast but has uh, all these players have been on big teams before they're a mainstay on the pub circuit. They all play NEL. They're all constantly in tournaments like the SECS, um, playing together, and it's good to see them showing up in the Star Ladder. Do you have a lot of experience with Will Wreck while whistling? You know, I have a lot of experience with them on different teams. So just so everybody knows, W4 is basically a hodgepodge of American Tier 2 teams. Uh, you've got Fan of Soy and Sleasel and I'm a Sheep. Used to play with Ryu Brews and Cakes, uh, formerly of E-Hug, uh, and that was on Team Typical Mistakes. Of course, Relic and Fan of Soria and then played with each other on No Earth Spirit, a team that I think most of the people who follow North American Dota will uh, be able to, to recognize. And then Fnatic NA is where they picked up Derp Derp, and that mm. was back in about 2012 until the beginning of 2013 for about three months. Actually, Derp Derp played with Whitebeard, so the only competitive experience Derp Derp has is with a uh, player from his opponents today. Indeed. So uh, let's talk about the draft a little bit as it's already out right now. Bans... Um, uh, first bands coming from Sneaky Nick's Assassins, maybe not the most typical first bands. They see a Jakiro and an Omni Knight knocked out. Uh, on the opposite side, we see the Elder Titan, the Brewmaster, the Legion. A little more common coming from Will Wreck while whistling. Uh, what do you think of those first two bands, just out of curiosity? Uh, Sneaky Nick's Assassins, I was actually talking to Mike in the lobby before this started, mm -hmm. and Mike basically said, uh, <laughs> somewhat facetiously, I think, but he said that uh, Five, Derp six. Derp is the American Go Black, and he'll be the second coming of PPD. And then he basically said Derp Derp only Desert plays heroes attack. that heal his teammates and then listed off every hero in the game that'll be a support that heals teammates. Mm. And I'm not at all surprised after that long spiel <laughs> that he went on to, to see him banning out the Omni Knight and then the VS who has to swap. He said heal or save. So he, he also mentioned like OD and, and heroes like Vengeful Spirit. So I'm not surprised to see him with such high regard for this player kind of banning out some of that player's signature heroes. Yep, should be pretty good. So keep in mind, guys, the Sneaky Nicks Assassins all say stand-in, as do Will Wreck while whistling. Uh, those are not stand-ins. They're just having fun with the trend that is apparently to put stand-in before your team name uh, instead of the team name. But these are all the actual players for the prospective team. So Enigma and Spirit Breaker grabbed up by the Sneaky Nicks Assassins, Tidehunter and Naga Siren on W4. So it looks like a, a good team fight. W4 going for the gusto here. The SNA lineup, I'm not so sure about yet. What do you think of those picks? The SNA, they are certainly picking some less common heroes. I mean, the Enigma we were seeing a lot of for a little while during uh, early November-ish, uh, mostly due to Puppy's influence. <laughs> and we haven't really seen a whole ton of him since then. This month, I, I guess we've seen him played in about 12% of games this month. So that's that's not really terrible but it's not necessarily something you would expect out of a first pick spirit breaker you pretty much never see he's often considered a weak hero especially for this meta he doesn't have a lot of aoe to splash he doesn't really contribute a whole ton in these team fights and the fact that they changed him a little while ago i think in 6.81 so that he can be stunned out of his ultimate he can be stunned obviously while he's charging it makes him a bit of a liability if his positioning is not absolutely perfect so <laughs> we see the Void picked up by Sneaky Nick's Assassin, so a little bit of a match on the late game. The Ember Spirit banned out by Will Wreck while whistling, and an, uh, an Abaddon banned by Sneaky Nick's Assassin. So he's really taking that get rid of all the healers and rescuers thing seriously. Yeah, he really is. I, I'm 
Well, the Nagas Iron's already out, right? So that's presumably W4's carry, unless they want to pull an Arteezy or something, or go straight up fluff and stuff style Nagas Iron support. But that's not very likely in this current meta, where games are going longer and longer. More than likely, you're going to expect a hero who carries as hard as Naga Siren to be put in that farm and carry position. The Rubik coming out, he's a pretty typical pick. Not very surprised to see him coming out. I think Sneaky Nix Assassins are actually overthinking this draft they a little bit. They, they seem to be going for all these niche picks and pocket strategies that they think Wheel Wreck Wall Five Wrestling seconds. might be going for. And as it turns out, they're drafting a fairly standard pool. Reserve time. Uh, def absolutely. So... So far, as we look at this sort of setting up, I like I like where Will Wreck while whistling is going with this one. Like you said, it's it's pretty traditional, but these heroes are going to work really really well together. Rubik with plenty of good stuff to get his hands on. Uh, what do you look for as we go into the last picks on each team? What do you think that Sneaky Nix is trying to get their hands on to sort of take this game for themselves? And where's Will Wreck going with this one? Well, Sneaky Nix assassins already have those two big AOE skills. Enigma does pair fairly well with Faceless Void. I, it's hard for me to tell because Spirit Breakers run so rarely that you don't really know what they're going to do with them. They could run them as a support and, and really throw uh, a spoke or a stick in the spoke, so to speak, of, of W4's predictions. Or they could run him as the farming carry and end up throwing the Faceless Void into the off lane. It's looking increasingly like a farming carry. I don't expect to see the Spirit Breaker mid unless Sneaky Nick's Assassin's see a fairly easygoing mid hero coming out of wheel wreck somebody mm -hmm. who's melee maybe if they expect the naga siren to be mid they would consider throwing a roaming ganking mid spear breaker out but more than likely i think we're probably going to see that here in the safe lane farm now so presumably what's left to pick up is a mid for sneaky nix assassin all go. right so uh, normally i just just to address it real quick with the mic issue should be fixed guys uh went ahead and changed that and uh, if it isn't fixed after you hear me say this, type it out. I'm sure you can spam Twitch and let me know for sure. Wraith King picked up with the Ancient Apparition. I like that Apparition grab. I think it's a I, one of my favorite supports. I think he fits really well with the Sneaky Nicks lineup. Wraith King, uh, obviously going to be thinking that carry position or is going to be one of those old-fashioned new school uh, support pick Wraith Kings. <laughs> the old-fashioned new school. Well, I guess because remember it was a thing for a minute and then it all of a sudden stopped being a thing. It's well. It it was a thing for quite a minute. If that if that was a minute, you uh in the grand you, scheme you of Dota. A, in the grand scheme of Dota. Well, I, it was for like a year that you saw. I, I don't know. I I think the support rating is probably what we're gonna see here, and the Naga Siren will most likely be the carry. Mm -hmm. um the, the support wraith king does very well with the tide hunter. They are able to get into these fights and extend them as much as possible. They're able to sort of buy time for the Naga Siren Dancing to splash around as much damage as she can, and for Rubik to steal something very good in the middle of the fight. But the carry Wraith King here wouldn't give W4 a whole ton of mm, that late game potential time. unless they were to, to be, be able to open up space from the Naga Siren to then do some catch up farm and run a dual core that way. Now, I expect the Wraith King and the Tidehunter to be acting sort of as that mid game space creation and really just try to get in here and do as much as they possibly can to disrupt the Sneaky Nix Assassins while this Naga Siren gets up a Radiance, gets up Boots of Travel, gets up Mantis Style, and really goes to town. Excellent. Zeus, <laughs> Zeus banned out by Will Wreck while whistling, interestingly enough. And then the Marana gotten rid of as well. So, last set of picks here. Uh, Sneaky Nix Assassin is not with a lot of time left in the reserve tank. So, they're going to have to make a pretty quick decision here going up against Will Wreck, uh, who presumably is going to be looking for that last support. So, should it be Damn too to bad to ban out? I mean, Will Wreck while whistling is sitting on a copious amount of stud. I mean, that Enigma's life is going to be pretty terrible. Yeah, this is... Once again, it's interesting. The positioning is very, very key for Sneaky Nix Assassins because if you're going to stack an AoE such as a Puck, which is presumably going to be your mid, uh, uh, or an Enigma's Black Hole on top of the Faceless Void, uh, it's very difficult to do that as a coordinated team because you can't go into the Chronosphere to set up for your incoming stun, which means Enigma has to make sure he's waiting around the outside. Puck needs to make sure that he's waiting around the outside. Blink daggers are absolutely key. Mm -hmm. Ancient Apparition obviously pairs extremely well with this. I'm just not sure how well the Spirit Breaker pairs with anybody Damn except the AA, who can obviously assist him in ganks globally. Right. Five, six. So do you think that that's just an effort to slow down and kind of create issues for the Naga Siren as she goes through her farming process in the early game? A couple of wards mean that the Spirit Breaker Ancient Apparition can really slow down her Radiance progression? Uh, it, it's... I think really the Sneaky Nix Assassin's game plan here is collapse before there can be 
anything done for that Naga Siren. So get that Spirit Breaker out and moving as soon as possible, probably around the 8 to 12 minute mark, and really just start to roam around. Get the Faceless Void some open lane time at that point to help him mm. catch up from that off lane. And then collapse as soon as the Enigma gets a Blink Dagger out of the jungle, maybe Blink Dagger Mechanism, as soon as the Puck has that Blink Dagger and the Faceless Void has caught up to something along the lines of a Maelstrom. And, and from that point forward, they don't want to wait. They don't want to buy time in this game because they don't really have the lane clearing potential to deal with Naga Siren Illusions once that Radiance, Boots of TP, and Mantha Style come out. And you can really expect all of that to come out if you're not forcing your opponents to, to act. You right. can expect that to come out on Naga Siren sometime between 25 and 35 minutes. So the Snake and Assassins don't have a lot of time to spare. Yeah, they're going to have to be pretty aggressive pretty early on and take control of the game. So, and, and you know, we watch, you and I have watched a lot of Sneaky Nicks Assassins over almost the last year. We saw them when they sort of were coming onto the scene. And they are the very down. aggressive and have been for a long time. So it's not going to surprise me to see them pick an aggressive lineup and know that they have to beat out that late game, but be totally comfortable trying to manage the tempo. So it looks like this is going to be a mid Naga Siren. Mm -hmm. And an off lane Spirit Breaker? Question mark? So... That's interesting. Ice Mike does typically play the offlane for the for the Nyx Assassins. We'll have to see if he decides to do that or if they're running an aggressive try. I don't really know what they're doing with that with that. Or did I say Nyx Assassin? I meant Spear Breaker. Wow, mm -hmm. I'm all over the place today. Either way, <laughs> um, it does look like Naga Siren is going to be running mid, which means the Wraith King will be doing some farming, which I like as long as the Naga Siren is getting some open farm. But against the Spirit Breaker, there's a lot of opportunity for the sneaky Nyx Assassins to be just disruptive here so relic is going to have to be honest toes and have his map awareness even more peaked than normal all right looks like we're waiting on everybody to grab up the last of their heroes 10 seconds left and we're going to get this show on the road so a little bit of last second strategy discussions going on and uh this should be a pretty good one i like these two lineups it means we're going to get a lot of action and we probably won't have to wait that long for it and there's the disconnect so there is the undo on that not waiting so long for the action moment well, we can go ahead and run through our players here in this match between Wheel, Wreck, Wall Whistling, and the Sneaky Nicks Assassins for W from the Radiant side. We are going to have Relic taking that Naga Siren. We have Slicel on the Wraith King. I'm a Sheep Sucks is going to be taking the Tide Hunter. Fan of Soyan, it will be on the Rubik, and Derp Derp will be handling that Disruptor. And then for the Dire side, we're going to have IX Mike 88 playing that Spirit Breaker. We're going to have Brax playing the Puck. The Faceless Void will be taken by TC, Ancient Apparition, by Fluff and Stuff. And last but certainly not least, we're going to see, uh, what did I miss? I think I missed the Whitebeard White playing that Enigma. I'm a little bit concerned about the composition for Nyx Assassins just because it's so greedy. Typically, you, you sometimes see a very successful AA just go without the Ags. But typically... By the the mid game coming to a close and the end game starting, you really need that AA to have an Ags to remain relevant in the game, considering the fact that the Chilling Touch is a damage based spell rather than a percent based spell. The fact that the magic damage that you're pumping out overall is going to be much less impactful, so Ice Vortex doesn't matter as much. If your heroes have so much more health that the Ice Blast without the Ags is so much right. less impactful. If you don't get the Ags, the hero just falls off so much harder than a lot of supports in that position. But with the Ags, he stays effective throughout the entire game. Unfortunately, there's at least two Blink Daggers that are needed here. You're going to need some farm on TC on that Faceless Void. And presumably, this offlane Spirit Breaker is going to need to get some farm as well, because while he does scale well into the mid game, relatively under farmed, he is going to need to be able to keep up, especially against somebody who uses illusions, which kind of make it difficult for the Spirit Breaker to, to close the deal. So we'll pull up the last hit tonight chart for you guys to keep an eye on as we get this thing rolling. And it looks like a, uh, is that going to be a solo safe lane faces void up on the top by himself? It's, well, the Enigma is going to be up there There's in the jungle, presumably. And it looks like AA is going to be going up there. So I, I think we're going to see a standard off lane. It's just going to be an, a, an unstandard hero for it with mm -hmm. I Mike on the Spirit Breaker all alone down here. 36. Looks interesting. Uh, meanwhile, over in the top rune position, we've got Sleasel waiting to go ahead and get that. Had a bunch of backup from his crew, waited to see if anybody stuck their head out for some warding. They didn't, and it looks like uh, WH will just fall back after that. Never Here mind. Smokes. So they yeah, pop the smoke, they're going to cross the river. There is an Enigma in play, so they absolutely have to get across the river to, to block some of these camps, and I presume that that's what they're doing here. Maybe even trying to get a kill on that Enigma, but Fan of Sorian, or excuse me, yeah, Fan of Sorian is carrying some sentry wards, and they are going to block out at least this camp, and presumably this camp as well. All right, so we'll keep an eye on. They do that, uh, let's see, seven times. That's not bad. 
So, yeah, both those camps blocked out. That is going to force the Enigma to kind of stay on the relevant side of the jungle force carry, which is not the worst case in the world. This is one of the reasons that the Dire Side jungle, in a lot of players' opinions, is not as strong as the Radiant Side jungle. Um, or, excuse me, it's not as easy to shut down as the Radiant Side jungle. Uh, because on the Radiant Side jungle, you can block out two camps and essentially block out three. Because this camp way over here, if you block that out, out the two in between, then no player is going to be able to get over there. Derp Derp already in some trouble. The Disruptor went real deep at the start and got himself all the way down to about 40 HP. So dangerous position to put some damage on Brax. All right. Over on the bottom lane, it looks like it's going to be that, like that you said, Tidehunter matched up against IX Mike on the Spirit Breaker. Who is going to get the best of that lane? I, you know, you don't see a one on one with the Spirit Breaker that often, so it's kind of hard to tell just off the top of my head, but I would expect the Tidehunter. Partially because that player's probably got a lot more experience doing one-on-ones with that hero. Absolutely. But also, I, the, the ability for the Anchor Smash to reduce Spirit Breaker's damage output will make it difficult for the Spirit Breaker, who is a melee hero, obviously, mm -hmm. to, to get that damage out onto creeps and, and to get those last hits. So, Whitebeard obviously in the jungle over the mid matchup. Like I said, we've got that Naga mid up against Brax. Naga doing pretty well for herself because of that early damage Brax took off of the uh, attack by Disruptor before Derp Derp went to the top lane. Derp Derp building into Thunderstrike first, so looking for the zoning out instead of the possibility of a gank. All right, well, Fluff and Stuff is actually falling back here. He's not going to be able to do any pulling, but he's making sure he's staying safe in the stop lane. DC is getting an absolute wreckage here, though. He can't go out too far because there will be a stun followed by a disruption, and, and he'll be, or excuse me, a glimpse, and he'll be sent all the way back to the fountain the hard way. So he needs to make sure that he's staying back sort of close to his tower, and it's definitely hurting his last hits. Right now, he's sitting at only 4 and 2, 2 minutes into the game. Yeah, and over on the mid, it's 12 and 4 for the Puck, and then 10 and 4, it looks like. I'm sorry, 10 and 0 for the Naga Siren, as she does go and get that bottle filled up up on the top rune. Whitebeard can be able to get the regen. Now, oh, what a lovely rune for Whitebeard in the jungle. Yeah, there, there's really not a whole lot that you could have asked for more if you are an Enigma. He is going to have to wait a little while for that demonic conversion to come back up, but all things said and done. He's actually going to try to rotate on this Tidehunter, who should have been able to see him because there's a ward in the jungle. And I'm a Sheep sucks. He's uh, going to yeah. be rotated down. So he's going to try to run away. In comes Whitebeard. Puts, yeah, he's doing some serious damage, forcing him to go the long way around. Are they going to have enough to take him down? Ruben comes yeah. in to help and says, no, you don't. There's another charge. Ice Mike is not willing to give this up. He comes in. There's some extra damage. One more bash here, and he can probably get it, but he is going to need it. There's that bash, and ooh, the Kraken shell giving him a little bit, and that salve not really helping as it got canceled right away. Yeah. And that's kind of an unfortunate set of events for I'm a Sheep Sucks, as he would have been able to stay in lane if he had kept that salve, but he was kind of desperate. So yeah, he'll have to go back, get some health, but uh, nice job surviving that Kraken shell, proving why it's such a valuable skill. Uh, especially, especially at that stage up against the hero like the Spirit Breaker in lane. Yeah, the uh, Kraken Shell at level 1 is useful. If he had had a Stout Shield, that would have actually overridden Kraken Shell on mm -hmm. enough that it would have blocked a little bit more damage. Level 2 is really where you see the Kraken Shell start to be useful. But of course, in a one-on-one, -on -one, you don't necessarily need that much protection, so I'm not surprised to see him going for a Gush Anchor Smash build. All right, back check in real quick with the mid lane. Brax at 21 and 6. Naga Siren played by Relic at 19 and 1 at the moment. And uh, both going for complete bottle control, just giving each other as many pops as they can. So it's just going the way you expected it to over in the mid. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult to kill that Naga Siren, especially before the Dream Coil is available, right? Uh, unfortunately for the Naga Siren, Puck is not going to be able to be harassed out. He's got so much survivability. He's got a fair amount of nuke as well if he does get himself into trouble he can turn it around and so there's not going to be any combination probably of the mirror image along with the riptide that is going to lead to puck not getting some last hits here and it's so, pretty much going to be a push lane unless there's some heavy rotations i would expect whitebeard rotating pretty deep here oh he found a courier but he also it got spotted out by the tower he needs a couple more attacks the courier does does not have a speed boost right now one more auto attack that'll be a courier but whitebeard will trade it for his life not first blood though because obviously no heroes doing damage right. that's definitely a trade worth making 
absolutely. So it's going to take away that bottle control, which was a really nice play. The bottle was on it, keep that in mind. So uh, Naga Sire no longer able to go and control those runes like she was earlier. So actually a really nice pickoff for Enigma. Brax into the jungle. Looks like they're going to try to make a move here. There's the charge going on. Rubik tossed up, thrown back. Dream Coil hits, though. That's a nice six. Fans of Soyan in some trouble. He drops down. They turn it back around, and I'm a Sheep Sucks. We'll run for the safety of the tower. Should have no problems getting away, but a nice pick rotation by Brax to get themselves the first blood. A really nice execution by the Sneaky Nix mm -hmm. Assassins. What Ix Mike did there charging while the Dream Coil was up was specifically to bait out that Telekinesis to make sure that as much damage that could be done would be done and that Telekinesis couldn't be saved for when the Nix Assassins would inevitably be forced to come together as they chase so that the stun can't be doubled up on them. So just to reiterate again, because we will keep talking about it over in the chat, these are not stand-ins, guys. I know that these teams, especially in the form of Wheel, are teams you might not be familiar with. These are their rosters. They're just wearing the stand-in tags for giggles, I suppose. Uh, but these are the players that are listed on Will Ref while whistling. I, I am a little bit concerned about the Nyx Assassins. So they're doing very well right now, but the Enigma is way behind where we would want an Enigma to be at this stage in the game. Partially because he was Up on top, they got the Void. Sorry for that, but they got TC hit fast six and made a quick move on the Wraith King, and he's going to go down. So Wraith was only level four, caught inside of TC's bubble, and nothing he could do about it. Very nice play by TC, especially getting up that six against what was for a good chunk of the, the laning phase, an aggressive tri lane. Mm -hmm. I, I'm worried about this Enigma dragging them down in the mid lane, in the mid game, but as long as TC doesn't get caught here, TC's they're in about good to shape. get caught, though. A nice play by Disruptor to bring him back. He's going to tie. Yeah, he gets out. Nice little time walk to escape, but they made the play. The stun wasn't available on Sleasel the second time around. Yeah, he couldn't quite keep the vision, and it was really good play by Fluff and stuff, too, to wait up here by these trees in case something went down, just to be able to throw out as much as he can for that cold feet and drop the chilling touch to deter his opponents from chasing in. Yeah, of course, remember, W4 have no idea where this Enigma is, but they do know that he's willing to rotate. Enigma, Absolutely. by the way, now sitting on top of the Soul Ring, so he's at least caught up a little bit. Speaking of rotations, speaking of rotations, we got a smoke as they head towards the mid. And nothing... Is that, a, is that a wasted dream coil there? Yes, that was a wasted dream coil there. It went down. I, I wasn't actually looking. I'm not sure if that went down onto a, a baited mirror image. That might have been it. Or if it just if it just missed on the edge. Either one of those is possible. So uh, Brax unfortunately loses that dream coil down for another minute. The gank that was rotating down there is not going to work out on the missed dream coil. Ancient Apparition heads all the way to the bottom. And uh, Whitebeard goes right back to farming out that jungle. So... Fluff and stuff looks like he might be up to no good here. He's got awards. What's he looking for? Well, he's trying to find himself a gank, I assume. He did smoke down here, so he's going to drop down the ward to try and make sure that they have vision of the Nagas Iron as much as possible. And the rotation now for Mike's Mike is going to come in from that off lane, and they just need to figure out which one of these is real. Should be easy. It has been pinged out. All the other illusions have taken damage, which it does give it away. The courier with speed boost already used is going to come out as well, so another pick on that would be very useful. But Looks they like see... they're not going to keep vision long enough in order well, to Well, they're going after the Tidehunter instead in the bottom where they get him picked off. Tidehunter pops the Ravage before he goes down, but little good it does. Tickles Mike, tickles Fluff and stuff, and they get themselves a nice kill there on the bottom lane. So smart by them to decide not to pursue the Naga, rotate back around, and catch the Tidehunter as he was out of position in that particular moment. Radiant yeah, and we actually, the fan of Sorian has been taking over the mid here, rotated out of his lane into the mid to do some catch up while Naga Siren is going to jump into the jungle very early. There are some stacked camps for the Naga Siren, and they're maybe a little bit fortunate that the Enigma didn't come down here and clear this out earlier. TP's up to the top, they want to go after TC. Void gets up a nice Chrono, starts some work on Sheep. There's the Black Hole to follow. Nice little combo to make that thing work. Kraken Shell putting in some damage, though. TC trying to jump to safety. We lost the Enigma. Nice play to pull him backwards, and this should be dead TC. So, Sneaky Nick's Assassins lost two on that attempted gank that started out so well for them. Yeah, this was very... Oh, Brax is Brax come doing? Brax coming happen. in, wants to get cheeky. Throws out the Dream Coil, wants to go on dirt, but the Silence is out there. Nice ultimate caught in the Kinetic Field. He's going to go down? He had no business being there. That was, he, had, yeah. he was way too confident in that engagement. Uh, I, honestly, the that entire engagement from beginning to end could be labeled too confident by Sneaky Nick's Assassins. They now have a net worth swing of about 700 gold off the back of that, which is, I mean, it, it's not going to end the game, but it's definitely going to make their mid game a little bit harder. They gave plenty of free farm time for the Naga Siren while the Void was going down. 
And it was just a no-win situation. Once the Void went in for that, he had no opportunity to get away unless he used the Time Walk. And because Glimpse is there, you really can't use the Time Walk to get away either. You have to save it until after your Glimpse. And he didn't have that opportunity. So he still gets hit by the Ancient Apparition. IX Mike makes the move the second it hits, and he's going to go down. Pops the ultimate and backs away. So that'll be a nice drop, 256. The Slacel, not interested in walking away, starts to put some damage on Mike. Disruptor comes in, throws him backwards. Mike could be in some trouble here, and he will go down. But now Slacel stock, cold feet too strong. And he's got to try to run Ancient Apparition, the only man nearby. He's going to get caught in the net, stunned out, and killed. So it's a nice two-man pick again for Will Wreckwall Whistling. This is not explicitly what I was talking about when I was saying that the, I was worried about the Nyx Assassins, but it is a symptom of what I was talking about. Even though their execution early game was very strong, their heroes are, well, they're just not scaling at the rate that they need to in order to keep ahead of this Naga Siren, who's continuing to farm out this jungle at a very good rate. She's sitting on 2,300 gold at 11 minutes, so she should be able to get up her Radiance at a really good time, probably somewhere around that 15, 16 minute mark out of the mid lane. All right, so quick check in in the gold charts. Thousand to Nyx's favor, dead even in terms of the XP. Winning on the last hit is the Naga Siren at 69 and four. Puck shortly behind at 56 and 14. Really, as far as CS goes, it's pretty even across the board in terms of where the lane lineups were. Uh, and it's still pretty much anybody's game at 1130. Now, if we're looking at items, Big ticket. Excellent. Ancient Apparition gets a nice little shot here to harass Simon Sheep. Sucks. Going to force him back off of that push. Uh, we got the Hand of Midas on the Wraith King. We've got the Ring of Aquila up on the Siren. Any other big ticket items? Looks like a Enigma's about to finish up his mech. And uh, Perseverance on the Faces Void. Yeah, we're just going to be a charge down here in the bottom lane as Sleasel is going to be saved by that Disruptor. Once again, Derp Derp putting in work. The Glimpse is available. It will pull back Ice Mike, who has already used his charge. He did have the Nether Attack or the nether strike but he didn't really have a viable target and probably right even if he'd used it he would have died probably yeah. could have used it just to do that little bit of extra damage since he was going down anyway but uh, in the end it really doesn't matter especially since that wraith king does have the life seal aura so everybody's going to be right back up to tip top shape immediately <laughs> the discussion going on between the players about what you can and cannot steal as rubik apparently well, remember, Empowering Haste is an activatable now. Right. It didn't used to be. It used to be a passive. So that's that's abnormal to see for, you know, for Dota players who've been playing the game for a while. To see Empowering Haste get grabbed is uh, is kind of a, an otherworldly experience. <laughs> All right, so down to the bottom lane where it looks like Whitebeard's out of the jungle and pushing hard on this bottom tower. A little bit of aid from Fluff and stuff. There's the big charge from IX Mike. Nice job. Gets the... Uh, Buff as he goes by, smacks on Sleasel, nice stuns around. Sleasel in some serious trouble, no ultimate, so he's not coming back. And he will drop, making it comfortable to do a creep skip and just push in on the bottom tower. A beautiful gank and really nice teamwork from SNA during that entire engagement. Really beautiful play by Sneaky Nick's Assassins. I really love what Whitebeard did here to get rid of the jungle so that any TPs in are going to have to be into the open. Mm -hmm. Just just great placement, and they are going for a more push-oriented build at this point. I'm not sure if that was the plan all along, or if the plan changed when Whitebeard started to fall behind and couldn't get that Blink Dagger up at a reasonable time. But he did go for the mechanism or the mechanism first, which is not horrifically uncommon. And uh, they're, they are probably just going to start collapsing on Tier 1s. All right, so into the jungle we go, where it looks like Mike, wrong place, wrong time again. He's got some good kills, but he's got some... Rough deaths so far, as it puts us at 8 and 4 in favor of Will Wreck. Gold lead is only about 2,000 for Nick, so despite the kill count, Nick's still in the lead. And it uh, looks like they're going to try to extend that by taking this middle tower under a serious assault. But in comes the Tide Hunter, blinks in, pops the Ravage, catches two, wants to make a move. Ancient Apparition going to hit with the Disco Ball of Doom. Fans of Soyan gets worked over by that. And then the Chronosphere. TC finishes with one shot. Brax getting low, Whitebeard as well. I'm a Sheep Sucks comes in. There's the big black hole, catches two. What are they going to do? Whitebeard's still really low, really worrisome. Naga Siren comes in, puts up the song, makes it easy to finish two. And it's going to be a one for two. Rubik for a puck and an enigma, and the chase is on his face as Floyd tries to get to safety. Ix Mike might want to pull off of this charge. Yeah, there we go. He's he's done some aggressive charges, but that's mm -hmm. maybe even across the line for him going in on that. That turned out honestly in the favor of the Nyx Assassins. With that Ravage, they probably should have lost two for nothing, and they engaged. Unfortunately, they used everything they have, and they are a bit of an ultimate dependent team with the Dream Coil, the Black Hole, and the Chronosphere until that. 
ultimate count comes back up, it's going to be W4's game. And it looks like W4 is going to use that time to continue to farm out the Naga Siren, who's sitting on 4,100 gold at this point, only f not even 15 minutes into the game, and doing very, very well. All right, so we'll go do a quick item checkup since uh, we haven't checked in on that in a minute. Boots starting to get finished up. Let's see, Rubik's got his four staff recipe and his staff of wizardry. So yeah, a little bit closer there, the Mask of Madness finished up on Hayek's mic, which maybe leads to why he's just been so brazen with that thing. And uh, TC not advancing much past that Perseverance. Still not a ton of gold in his bank account. Yeah, this is, once again, the mid game is rolling around pretty soon here. Nyx Assassins need to make sure that they're staying in pace and they need to make sure they're not dying too much either because they have not lost any towers and they've taken two towers every death that they lose is going to have extra gold in it because they have a tower advantage and that therefore tower gold advantage every time they die to w4 w4 is getting a little bit extra of aoe gold based on their opponent's tower advantage so it's really if you're going to take an early game tower advantage unless you're using the map control very effectively it's dangerous to pick a hero like Spirit Breaker or like a, an offlane Nyx Assassin who really does go in and, and tries to put himself into precarious situations in order to maximize kill efficiency. We'll pull up the net worth for you guys on the stack chart. Number one, the Naga Siren, not a big surprise at 7,000. TC, not far behind though at 6.7. Now they want to move on Sleasel again. Ancient Apparition is just hitting those Disco Balls like it's his job. Sleasel's got to fall back. Has an urn on him too. Look how low he's getting. And uh, definitely a dangerous situation. Oh, so, boy. Good aggressive yeah. play by the Apparition. Faceless Void has finished his Battle Fury at this oh, point. Oh, good. So he does have the Splash in order to help take down the Naga Siren Illusions. I think the common Maelstrom may have mm -hmm. been a little bit more... Well, it's obviously a more common solution to this problem, but mm -hmm. it may have been a little bit more optimal of a solution as well uh, because Naga Siren is not going to group up her Illusions when the late game comes. And right. the Maelstrom proc can jump a fairly decent just distance in order to continue to cold the pack a little bit. But the Battle Fury, you have to be right up on your target in order to get that splash. Absolutely. I think TC more concerned, though, with getting that farm. He's working his way through the jungle consistently on rotation, taking those creeps out very, very quickly. It looks like he's going to potentially rotate right back in. But here we go with a big move by Sheep Sucks, followed by the rest of the crew. And it looks like they might think about an engagement. They've got the Blink Dagger now up on the Tide Hunter, so he's got the ability to engage. There it is. Links in, pops the Ravage, goes around. Ancient Apparition going to throw in. Nice silence by the Disruptor. TC could be in some trouble. Picked up, thrown down, and destroyed. And now some Ancient Apparition who's got to take off on the run. And he's probably going to be going down to the Glimpse as well. There's not a whole lot left. And he is going to try to kill Phantasaurian, but Phantasaurian stealing that Time Walk and able to get away very effectively mm -hmm. with that... Uh, yeah, with that stolen spell. There's and the Radiance, 1709. Not a bad time at all out of the White Whitebeard comes out invis, wants to make a move, goes on Tidehunter, who stayed two back for too long, and Brax moves in with the double damage rune, gets the pick off on him, and now the chase is real as in comes IX Mike, finishes off the Disruptor while Brax was uh, making his move on the Tidehunter, and ended up going the two for two. Really nice play by the Nyx Assassin. They're also going to be able to get a little bit of damage on this tier 2 offlane with the Mechanism and the Eidolons, which were summoned during that fight. And they might even be able to take this tower if there's not going to be another quick rotation. Phantasaurian doing what he can by himself. Mm -hmm. But those Eidolons alone are going to be able to get this tower down to about 400 health. Sleasel being very aggressive, pops the Blink Dagger, goes on Whitebeard, blinks in, throws the stun, starts to hack him down. Whitebeard could be in some trouble here. And it looks like he's going to go down. He is. Malefice picked up, by the way, by fans of Soyan on the Rubik. Sleasel needs to get that Midas used right now. He's been holding onto it for quite a while at this point. And he doesn't use it in the lane. Oh, yeah, he did. Okay, never he mind. He did. He used it in the lane. I was, was going to say. <laughs> holding on, buying that Midas on your farming carry, and then holding on to it indefinitely and doing nothing with it is definitely a, a sure fire way to lose your late game advantage. All right, so top, top under some serious assault here by Sleasel and Relic. Going to go down. Uh, they should put up the Glyph, but that's not going to do much to stop them from getting it. Brax heads up there maybe to try and get something should they progress to that Tier 2. And... Link in by Sleasel. He's... All right, I would say he's pretty far out there. He decides it's a bad idea. Maybe called back by his team and drops a little bit. The rest of the crew now showing up, though. It's going to be three up in the top jungle. Looking at Brax... In comes the blink. There's the stun, the silence. Brax cannot escape. He's stuck in the kinetic, and he'll go down. 
That disruptor is such a good play here. We're going to actually see TC TPN go in, but the Chronosphere doesn't land on both. And Phantasoin is going to be able to tell Kinesis and get away. TC now getting very low. He's going to have to run. There's a Wraith Fire Blast for the kill there. Now Fluff and stop taking a fair amount of damage. He came in to get the Rubik. Rubik has gone down. As Sleasel tries to chase in, now he's going to have to turn away. He does have his ultimate if he needs it. The Ravage is there, and I don't know why Sleasel's not going in with his ultimate. Maybe he doesn't have mana, but he is going to turn away and let Ima Sheik Sucks die getting that Ancient Apparition. So it ends up as a three for three. The two late games on WH walk away, Enigma and Spirit Breaker survive for their side. So I guess maybe Sleasel made the right call in the sense of they just sort of secured their farmers as safe. And with the with the farm that they have, you know, it's it, it's a lot better to lose that Tidehunter. Yeah, for sure. If you're going to lose one, maybe two, might as well keep the Wraith King safe. He does have the level two reincarnation. So it's not as big of a deal if he loses it anymore. Uh, he just didn't seem confident that they would be able to, to clean up. And what they would essentially have to do there is him going back in was him saying, I think my team can take this two on two at this stage, which is a, a dubious proposal, maybe. So gold lead at 1,000 for Nyx, dead even in terms of XP still. Uh, we do have that Battle Fury up, the Radiance, like we saw on the Naga Siren. It looks like the Pipe of Insights almost finished up on Enigma to go alongside of that mech. And uh, Relic's going to just go ahead and farm up the bottom. Recipe for the Mask of Madness now on the face of Void. And that's about it for new big items. All right, yeah. We are going to be seeing a Black King bar come out very soon for IX Mike mm -hmm. as well, which will be very important for dealing with this Disruptor. Disruptor, as I started to say... Rex! Oh, never mind. Rex jumps in on Relic, wanted to make a move, but the rest of the team was standing right around the corner. Blink Dagger jumped by Amashib Sucks and makes Brax pay because he blinked in to check out the farm spot. So, caught in a bad position, ends up giving up a 900 gold swing. And, uh, I don't know, just, just, why go there? I'm not even sure that Brax can take Relic one-on-one -on -one at this stage anyway, so it seemed like... I, he wanted the opportunity kill. He obviously wanted to open up some space and, and knock this Naga Siren down because as I've been saying all game, they need to be very, very scared of this Naga Siren. And the Void is even building the Battle Fury specifically, presumably, to deal with the Naga Siren and try to help coal it out through the mid-game. But they really haven't done anything to slow this Naga Siren down throughout the bulk of this game. And at, at this point in time, this Naga Siren is sitting at 2-0-3. Has not been killed once yet this game. Yep, and it looks like uh, we're gonna see a smoke rotation by the Sneaky Nix Assassins into the Roche Pit. No idea from WH. They're actually thinking about pushing the bottom lane right now. So they're within striking distance of stopping this thing, but they have no idea that it's going on. Yeah, this is gonna be a Roche, but they might have to be prepared to fight afterwards. Siren Song is up though, so W4 can really be as aggressive as they want here because as long as Siren Song pops, they're absolutely safe. So down he goes. Nyx will back out, and immediately WH backs off as well, saying, oh, well, didn't realize that was happening. And uh, they get caught in a tough position. So nice nice sneaky play by Nyx Assassins to get that Roche in a really comfortable time for them. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and take it and presumably use it. I, I, I can't imagine them not using that to try and push some towers down. The pipe is now up on Enigma as well. They, they have absolutely no cares for controlling the mobility here with the uh, Enigma. I, presumably, they are relying on the Dream Coil and Chronosphere to set up Enigma enough time to just walk in and drop that black hole, which is not always the most successful of plans, but certainly having that pipe and mechanism available will help their push out. And with the counter push of uh, Naga Siren with Radiance, and now Travs and almost Yasha, mm -hmm. they yeah. need every little bit of help they can get to get these towers. Yasha's actually done. It's just going to get Courier out in the next run. So Relic looking pretty good in terms of taking this late. And like we said, Nyx has an okay late game, but matched up against that Naga and that Wraith King, I just don't know if they can stand up against it if this game goes too long. I think you said 35 minutes can be the sweet spot for the Nyx Assassins. Do you think they're going to get that? It's not looking like it right now, especially with the Battle Fury pick out of TC. That, that's not really a 35-minute wrap-up sort of item. That, that's an item that you get if you're planning on taking uh, taking the game fairly late. Um, he does have his Mask of Madness up now, and he is working toward a BKB as the AA does go down up top lane, and Ix Mike is going to go ahead and chase in. Managed to get the ultimate off of the Wraith King. Brax is here as well. There is a Dream Coil. There's going to be the Cyclone just buying a little bit of time for them to get everything in place. The Nether Strike is out, and some auto-attack damage to Silencer as well. One more charge for the Bash. 
and that's going to be all she wrote. A great trade for the Knicks. Absolutely. Season. Yeah, it's Sleasel way out in left field there to get that gank on the AA, and no help, no backup from his team. So, an interesting choice to be that far up there in that exposed of a position. Nick's going to be very happy, like you said, with that grab. And, and great on them for the fast reaction to seeing AA get picked off. If, if there's one thing you absolutely cannot have, if you have Nick's Assassin's lineup, it's slow reactions. Mm -hmm. They're completely dependent on reactions with the reactive AA ult, the reactive charge, the reactive coil, or excuse me, illusory orb, jaunt blink. Uh, they have an extremely mobile team overall, but they need to have their ear to the ground for any opportunity to be disruptive. So the gold lead right now is actually on WH's side. It's about 1,000 XP has actually gone to Nick's side at 2,000. It was even for a very long time. So Nick's trying to pull ahead in terms of levels, but it's farm related if you look at the stack chart for net worth that's where it gets a little bit scary the naga siren at 13.7 for the radiant next up is the wraith king and then you've got that void and that puck following behind by a decent distance in terms of their farm and this is starting to become danger zone at 25 minutes the the another issue is that relic has gotten going much faster than you would expect because he did not die, he really did not get rotated on, and he did very well Whoa. in the jungle. Up top, nope. Sle yep, Sleece looked like he was going to get himself position again, but goes in, blinks away once he realizes something up, and he's going to head back down towards that middle lane. Pings out on Relic, who's sitting on a bottled DD. This should be fun. Oh, and, dear. Uh, Whitebeard. Oh, there we go. Whitebeard caught by Sleasel. The jump in comes from TC. Throws up the Chrono. Wants to go Sheep Sucks. He's got two. Derp Derp goes down. They come back around. Land the Black Hole on two. Here comes the charge from IX Mike. What a play. They got one. They've got another. That's three down, but one's coming back up. Now we got Naga Siren coming in as well. Ancient Apparition Ultimate does hit. Siren Song is popped to try and get a save. Sleasel gets some follow-up damage from Mike. And now he's going to charge. The blink was used, but he got the charge off before the blink went through. He's isolated, has no Naga health, and will go down. It's a four for none. 18 to 15. Sneaky Nick's Assassins makes their comeback at 26, man. What a that's, play. That's everything you wanted out of the Nick's Assassins. They're going to get a tier two. They probably can't high ground on this, but they are going to pr put some pressure on that tower. They... 3,500 gold goes the way of Nick's in that exchange. Here's the killer for this. They did not lose the Aegis on TC. So they can continue to push this as aggressively as they want to, basically. Just have TC sit out front, do a little bit of slow siege damage onto this tower, and they're not going to do any of that that I was talking about. They're just going to back off, which honestly I think is a little bit of a mistake until that Wraith King comes back up. Mm -hmm. Have TC up there. There's the, the glimpse isn't that scary when you're pushing high ground because it's just going to push you out of your opponent's space. The telekinesis is, but you have the Aegis at this point. And God only knows if you're going to have another clear opportunity to take a four-man wipe anytime in the next right. nine minutes. Yeah, and Relic, Relic, the only one who survived, is uh, goes straight up to the jungle, farming very aggressively, pushing lanes at the same time. And that's sort of the fear at this point. What does Nyx do to answer the incredibly farmed Naga Siren that we're seeing? Well, right now they're going to go and try to gank with Ice Mike, Pop, and then Mask Man. If they know Siren Song is there, that was a beautiful time. As soon as Siren Song goes down, that's what you do. You charge her if you know which one is real, and you have everybody on the map just run down to where she is and try to kill her. That one kill swung the net worth over a thousand gold in favor of Nyx's ass. Now, so, I missed them stacking up because I was watching her farming. Did they have a ambush set up knowing that she would be coming bottom to farm the creep wave, or did it was it just fortuitous that three heroes were standing there when she TP'd in? Well, the... Charge the, the spirit breaker charged in, and during the time that the charge was happening, the rest of the heroes kind of rotated on her. So the gotcha. charge does it's quick, but it takes a little while if you're charging from a fair distance away, mm -hmm. which gives your team an opportunity to either TP or at least start moving. And it took it even took both the puck and the AA a, a couple of extra seconds after the charge landed to make it there. So. Right. So into the dire jungle we go as we see. All of Sneaky Nick's assassins down here on the bottom corner of the map looking to push in on the tier 3 or possibly pick someone up if they come out for farm. Lots of vision here for the Sneaky Nick's assassins as they've just kind of locked up this section of the map. Roche still two minutes away from us knowing how long until he's actually back, so. Yeah, this is a little passive for the Nick's assassins, mm -hmm. but they don't really have a good opportunity to move in and... Wheeler, they're doing a good job after that wipe. They're doing a good job of realizing their weaknesses, and oh, maybe not. I'm a Chief Sucks getting out pretty far. He cannot see Whitebeard. Whitebeard is staying just outside of vision, thanks to that nighttime line of sight. Oh. Looks like there's not going to be a charge down there. Maybe there is. 
As Whitebeard is still hanging around here. He's got Black Hole in one second. And Brax is rotating down as well, so the charge should be incoming if they get vision again. Unfortunately, they've lost vision, they've lost their opportunity. So yeah, Sucks will rotate away. Uh, Whitebeard doing a great job of managing that vision, though. Whitebeard, a, a great player who's been with Sneaky Nick's Assassins off and, off for, off and on for a very long time, but uh, one of the OG members when they burst onto the scene, and it's good to see him back in the saddle with these guys. Yeah. He's been playing in the saddle with them for, for a little while now, mm -hmm. but... It, the, the next Assassins have been going through a lot of changes lately. Obviously, when they got Fluff and stuff, they did drop uh, Snaw, and uh, they, they picked up DC. And then, then they picked up Brax and got rid of Ush. No, the, Brax, uh, the Brax Ush trade, I think, is the most yeah. recent. Which sort, of, which sort of opened up the door for the return of Whitebeard and some other uh, things going on there. By the way, gold lead at 4,000 for Nyx, and the XP is the one. It's a huge drop-off. Nyx is actually up by 13,000 uh, experience right now. Yeah, they're up by any measurement in the current moment. The question is, are they up in momentum moving forward? And I would argue that they are not, especially being as passive as they are. They don't have an Aegis anymore, though they do have a BKB on the Faceless Void, which will be key for killing the Naga Siren. Being able to jump on her and knock her down, even if she has her ultimate, is absolutely required if you're going to go up against her through this mid game into the early portions of the late game. Looks like this top tower should be dropping. That's a tier two going the way of the next assassin, helping their gold lead out just a little bit. And at this point in time, when we update, we'll probably be sitting at about 5,500 gold, or excuse me, net worth advantage for the next assassins. And Roshan is up. They do have great map control right now. There's fairly poor vision around the Roshan pit for W4. And uh, I, I really think the next assassins can just kind of rotate in there since they can see four on the map or have been seeing four on the map for the bulk of the last couple of minutes. They can feel pretty safe rotating around that way to take so, that. Vegas. Quick update: Void with the BKB, Spearbreaker with the BKB. We've got a, a hex stick up on Brax on the puck right now, uh, which is going to be a game. I think a game changer for them. Demon Edge on Faces Void as well. Uh, Manta style was finished up on the Naga Siren as you saw in the last fight, and those are the big items so far. So Nick's getting really, really well farmed as a group, I should say. Yeah. No, they're doing a good job of keeping themselves afloat. They're doing a good job of making sure that they stay ahead. Because bear in mind, a Naga Siren farms fast. So if you mm -hmm. are even equal with her, you're behind. Because she will farm faster than your entire team, basically. Uh, you got to ma make sure that you're staying ahead of her, both in terms of experience, but more importantly, in terms of gold and net worth and action ability. The Nyx Assassins are doing a fairly good job of it, but they're starting to tread water. And they have been treading water, really, honestly, for a little while now. And... I imagine that they're going to be a little bit concerned as they do find a charge up on charge Sleasel. up on top going for Sleasel again and I might decide not to yeah he, is, he, he can't take that fight honestly yeah. he, he can't take it especially if there's vision opportunity if Sleasel's standing like right next to trees on his right hand side mm -hmm. and the charge can land on him before he gets his stun off that's fine but if Sleasel is up here and he's got time to see that charge coming Ice Mike isn't even going to get a chance to land that charge before he goes down all right, so Slaysil backing off, still doing a lot of work by himself. Four man on the bottom. They smoke up as they search their own jungle. Uh, go ahead and get some D wards out there and try to take control back of that radiant side jungle. Meanwhile, Dyer is jammed into the trees by the middle, maybe expecting some action. There's going to be a charge up top for some farming yep. out of Ice Mike. And once again, just very passive play on Nyx's and very abnormal for them, especially right. with such an aggressive lineup. This is a hyper aggressive team, typically. And they are group farming a single stack of Ancients at the moment. Trying to get Fluff and stuff up some basic items, I assume. Or maybe trying to get Brax at next hit. He does have a Scythe of Ice, which is really, really nice. Yeah, so that's that's going to be really helpful for them as he uh, moves around. Let's see. What are we looking at right now? It looks like Enigma over in the middle. Wiper going to push back the aggression. Tower advantage definitely going towards the Nyx Assassins. Looks like he doesn't want to make an engagement. Nope, not going to happen. Lots of harassment from Nyx, but... Is it going to be detrimental to them that they're waiting so long to make their move? Because every second that you give WH to get more comfortable moving into the late game, you know, it, it makes it harder for the Knicks to really secure those high ground pushes. Nagas Iron is now sitting on the basic kit, what I would consider a basic carry or basic core Nagas Iron kit. Radiance, Manta style, Boots of Travel. She can push everywhere all the time. Yes, you do have a Spirit Breaker who's going to be able to respond to that, but... Eh... I, I really don't know that the Spirit Breaker can take Relic one-on-one -on -one anyway, so you still aren't going to be able to react globally to her. You're still going to need people to walk over to where she is. And staying as mobile as an Iron with the, that Boot of Travel Kit 
it's, it's just about impossible. I, I really don't know what the Nyx Assassins are going to be able to do in order to push up into the base for high ground, with the exception of take Roshan, take a four-man team fight, and then push up into the base before respawn timer. So. And speaking of it, they go into the Rosh pick and get some protection by Fluff and stuff as he stands on the outside. They're going to send Brax down to lane to show, try to keep the fact that they are Roshing hidden. Enigma going to push in the middle lane at the same time. And so far, it seems to be working. WH is all bunched up just a little ways away, but don't seem to be converging just yet. All right, well, yeah, TC is going to try to take it all on its own and some pretty good placement out of the Nyx Assassins. There's going to be an illusion to scout from the scout. Naga Siren, but I, I wonder if this is going to be fast enough. Oh, okay. Ice Mike charged it, coming in, trying to help out, finish this up as quickly as possible, as there is going to be the rotation. Naga Siren is going to throw down another White Bear. White Bear is going to be stunned out by Slicel and pops his BKB. There's going to be the Stone Spear coming in onto Relic, but he's going to get Dirt from first before that ultimate can come out of the disrupt the Michael on the edge. Make sure that anybody who didn't get hit by the Chrono Spear is going to be held down. Now Ice Mike is going to be able to clear up that Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter has gone down. Slicel taking a fair amount of damage himself. He has had to use his ultimate, and that is a four man wipe, probably a five man wipe. Sweet as... sassy molassy. That's, that's, I mean, that's. That's exactly what we just said they needed to do, right? They needed wow. to move into Rosh and then take a fight. They baited that in perfectly. They landed every single skill exactly where they needed to be, including the wisdom to stack their ultimate. Normally you don't want to see that, but in a fight like that, Whitebeard made 100% the right decision to go ahead and stack it, his mm -hmm. black hole on the edge of the Chronosphere to make sure they had complete control of the area. That choke yeah. point fight, just make sure they can't do anything before they die. Choke point works. So I'm just going to come up 10 seconds on the Rubik and only one buyback on the side of WH. And that's the Titan who probably will not use it. They should just yield this tower. And uh, I don't, I don't, will they get a Rax out of this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll get a Rax out of this for sure. There's a Mask of Madness up on TC. That's right. Meanwhile, on the bottom, IX Mike goes straight down there, and he's going to push the bottom tower at the same time. So we do see the melee racks go down. Range rack takes a lot of damage, but not going to drop, and the bottom tower is lost in that exchange. So a five-man wipe, a two-tower loss, and a melee barracks to round out a really rough three-minute segment for Will Wreck while whistling. That buys a lot of time for the Nyx Assassins. We've been talking for probably about 15 minutes now about how the Nyx Assassins are just treading water. Mm -hmm. They're just staying where they are in within, you know, the win range. They're not really pulling ahead and they need a big moment in order to get there. Now they're sitting pretty at about 12,000 net worth advantage thanks to those towers and the hero gold from that swing. They mm -hmm. also have themselves an Aegis on the Faceless Void, which means for the next six minutes, there's not a lot of aggressive pushing that W4 is going to be able to safely do. Nyx Assassins just bought themselves maybe the game, but certainly 10 to 15 minutes of decent game time where they have control of the map, control of their opponents. Yeah, they got me feeling pretty good about that. I mean, how can you not after that exchange? Looks like a MKB finished up on TC, by the way. I don't believe he had that before the last fight. Got that after the last big push. Recipe for the Daedalus up on the Spirit Breaker for IX Mike and uh, Ag Scepter on the puck. Boy, oh, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty brutal. Yeah, we are, I, I mean, Gold. it's going to become, oh, mm, did I hear a charge? No, it was just well, him no. creeping. Gold lead, by the way, has jumped down to 12,000 for the Stinking X Assassins after that big exchange. Huge black diamond drop off. XP is tw almost 30,000 to their advantage. So if we look at the level stack, it is not looking good for the Radiant side. I mean, it's 21, 21, 20, and then a lot of green. Yeah, this is, well, remember, Naga Siren typically is going to not play as a powerhouse as much as she's going to play as a rat. And we've seen lots of games where Naga Sirens that get out a good early game farm and then have a bad mid game for the team or a bad moment for the team through the mid game. Lots and lots of games and lots and lots of opportunities for that to turn into a victory. Unfortunately, and Sleasel is going to die. Taken he's going to die He's got no help nearby. TC puts up the uh, Chrono just to make sure that it happens, and they get a nice pick. No buyback. 78 seconds without the Wraith King up, and uh, they'll be able to push up this top lane pretty aggressively. It was a good smoke rotation by the Sneaky Nicks Assassins to make sure that they got that. Yeah, I don't know what Cecil was doing all the way out there, to be honest. He knows his team is playing from behind. He knows his opponents have an Aegis, and he knows mm -hmm. that the only way that they're going to win this is by dragging it out, getting the rat in place, and then just having enough AOE damage up toward the towers in the barracks that Nyx Assassins can't respond to it. And instead, right. he's way out in front farming. 
Looks like we're looking at the high ground. They're going to send TC up. Starts doing a lot of damage. That Mask of Madness putting in some serious work. Phantom Swain comes up with a harass. Brax going to chase him backwards over on the mid lane. And it doesn't look like they can do anything to stop TC as he just motors through that tower. Moves on to the melee racks. Wilrek while whistling. Standing back. Hoping to make a move. Relic is up. She has her song. Phantom Swain picks up the Chronosphere. The song is popped. They're going to move in. Picking out fly. Mike and TC, Brax isolated him by himself, they decide to go that way. They put up the Silent, they put up the Kinetic Field, throw up a Chrono as well to lock him in place. BKBs are popped all around, we've already lost the Tidehunter. They turn it back around, they want to keep moving on Relic. Relic trying to get away, not going to happen. Down she goes, and it's two down. Fans of Soyan going to make it three in just a second as he tries to get away from Brax, but Brax not having it. Soyan jumps, but will it be enough? Stole that Illusionary Orb, won't save him. Down he goes, buyback from the Big Green Watermelon as well as the Naga Siren. They want to come out and put a stop to this. IX Mike a little exposed. There's the Blink, catch the Ravage. IX Mike going to go down, Fluff and Stuff in some trouble. Chronosphere comes out though from TC. Derp, derp, dropping fast. TC leaves and the team escapes. They get what they came for. They took the lives of their opponents. They will lose Whitebeard, but a small sacrifice to make. As uh, they got both, they got, I'm sorry, the melee racks and the tower, as well as a good amount of kills and two forced buybacks. Okay, we're officially in the point in time where this game never gets easy again for W4. They've lost mm -hmm. two melee barracks. Even though they have the Naga Siren, split pushing out two lanes like that, with her being your really only strong pushing potential. I mean, the Tidehunter has a little bit as well, and you have the Fade Bolt from the Rubik, but, but in terms of pushing all the way down a lane, Naga Siren's the only hero they have that does that. She can split push two lanes with Mega simultaneously, but she can't do it fast, and she can't do it very effectively, especially against Nyx Assassins, who are hella fed at this point. I mean, there's there's really nothing that WH can do to go up against him as long as those ultimates are up, and Relic is doing everything he can in order to get his net worth high enough so that they can't kill him, but I don't know at this point in time if that's a realistic goal. Yeah. And the last tier one on the map did just go down to a deny by the Faceless Void. So they can't even get a little bit of a break in terms of that gold as TC goes out and gets that. Item-wise, there is a Chrysalis, almost a full Daedalus, up on Spirit Breaker. So he's got that Chrysalis in hand. And the Refresher Orb recipe is now up on the Faceless Void. Uh, he's getting pretty close to having that. It's Once that... Re once that I mean, it's already pretty bad for him. But once that Refresher comes out, is there anything that Will Wreck can really do? Uh, well... Do you mean the refresher on the faceless void? Yeah. Uh, or you is he? Yeah, I I don't know. The refresher is going to be coming out onto the time hunters soon too, so that's good for them. I mean, it's there. It's literally being carried to him on the courier. The problem is, the two big heroes that you got to worry about at this point, the spirit breaker and the faceless void, the ones pumping out all the damage. They've got BKBs. Right. So unlike TC's refresher, which is going to hold everybody in place regardless of their magic community, the the Tidehunter's Refresher is, is not going to be nearly as effective at this stage in the game unless they get the jump on their opponents. And W4 is not really in a position to be going out and getting the jump on anybody, so it'll be very difficult for them to use that Tidehunter Refresher effectively. All right, so we'll take a quick look at the gold chart just for fun. Nyx Assassin's up by 17,000, not 1,700. And uh, up by <laughs> XP of 30,000. So if we look at their hero, the level stack chart, it is pretty brutal up there at the top now we do see a smoke come out of the guys on wh this is this that last ditch smoke try to get a pick off get a little bit of gold and it looks like it's going to be as they rotate into their own jungle they're going to walk right smack into whitebeard and ix mike whitebeard destroying trees it comes slacel gets there the stun on mike who's trying to tp away whitebeard decides maybe no and now they're going to go so slacel could be in some trouble mike putting up a lot of damage that bkb doing some work naga gonna put up her siren song but tc don't care he's bkb burns down the rubik they finish off Sleasel. He's coming back, though, trying to make a move on Relic. He pops his BKB. Big Black Hole catches two. And meanwhile, they finish off the Naga Siren. There's that Ravage we've been waiting for. Here comes the Refresher, but he can't get the second one off. And it's a five-man wipe. We should see Sneak yeah. Nick's Assassins advance as the GG comes out. That's exactly what I was just talking about. The fact that the Tidehunter literally waited outside of the fight, outside of Vision, from downhill across the trees for the opportunity to get a full team Ravage because you have to wait for those BKBs to go down. Um, the Naga Siren Song didn't come out soon enough to prevent those BKBs from going up and, and there's no way they can take that fight without the huge double Ravage. It's just not gonna happen at this stage. So guys, that's the only game we got for you tonight here on Star Ladder. My name is Toffees. You can follow me at Toffees underscore Dota 2. I'm joined by LDJ Stats from the Standard Deviant Stat Crew and Gorgon the Wonder Cow. Where can the folks find you? 
Uh, you guys can find me over at GotCowDota, where you can find updates on my casting, my writing and analysis for Join Dota and elsewhere, and basically everything that I'm doing. So that's it, guys. We appreciate you being here. Come back. I think there's some more games going on tomorrow, so uh, should be a lot of fun. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, we'll hang out and chat for just a little while, play some music, and listen to any feedback or flame you happen to have for me. It was great spending the evening with you. Uh, have a great night. Enjoy the sounds. And as always, Toffee's out.